sweater. No. <laughs> yeah. uh, a bracelet. Oh, come on. Try and be a little more imaginative. Just a Rolls Royce. Right, right. No, I got you that last year. <laughs> That's right. How can I forget that? Um, oh, I know what it is. What? It's a horse. Isn't it? Isn't it? it? It's a golden palomino. You know, if you had a horse for every time you whinny about wanting one, you'd have a herd by now. Stop. Because they're horses. What? They're so beautiful. They're so magnificent. So expensive. So impractical. Dreams aren't supposed to be practical. Well, keep dreaming. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what you do is you cut down the tree and you put it on a kind of air belt and it strips off the bark. And you invented that? Yeah. Didn't you know I was married to a genius, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> How much do you get paid for something like that? Oh, that's a military secret. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> do you want to make the tea? The, uh, the bags are on the top shelf there. Okay. Dinner was great. Thank you. How's that baby thing coming? Oh, not so good. Well, not that we haven't been trying. <laughs> it's just that it's been already a year for us, and we both want a baby so badly, and I don't know, maybe it's just not meant to be. Nonsense. You and Fred just work too hard. All you need is a couple of weeks on a beach somewhere with no deadlines and no pressures. Now, that sounds great, but it's not very realistic. And Fred's in the middle of a project. I'm doing all the repairs at the house. The animals need tending to. So. Not tonight. I finally got the fireplace and the guest room working. There's a stereo, great music, scented candles. <laughs> what are you doing? You're setting the mood. I want you two to relax and enjoy yourselves. <laughs> <I'm> so embarrassed. <laughs> Dr. Franklin. Hello. Oh, that's good. Congratulations. It's a normal pregnancy. Oh. It's terrific. Oh, that's wonderful. Wait, Jason finds out. <laughs> He's been driving us crazy wanting a brother or sister. Well, according to my calculations, he should have one around the first week in November. Why don't you sit down? There are a few things I want to discuss with you. Thank you. First of all, because of your age, I think an amniocentesis is advisable. Uh, isn't there a risk of miscarriage with an amnio? It's very slight. No, I, I don't want to take the risk. Alice, when you're 35 years old, the possibility of having a Down syndrome chart increases. I'd still have the baby. Why don't you both think this over before you make a decision? We have thought it over. You know, it hasn't been easy conceiving this baby. And we're gonna love it no matter what. Think of this. this. I think this is one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. <laughs> you have no taste. Thank you. Okay. Um. Hey, what about this eagle? That's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, this is nice. This is nice. Well, it's all spotted. Well, you can replace the mirror part. Right? Just look at the frame. Well, why in the world do you want to buy something? You just have to take home and fix. They're antiques, Fred. Well, I love antiques, but they're used now. This, this is nice. It's 150 bucks. This we should get. What do you think of this? What a cradle is this? What do we need a cradle? Since now. What? Where are 
you sure? Yeah, sure. Oh, <laughs> no! If this flick is too scary, I'm gonna hold you personally responsible. Well, it's not for little kids, you know. Forget little kids. It's my wife I'm worried about. <laughs> See ya. See ya, Gordon. Hi, Alice. Hi, Gary. How's the pregnant lady? Uh, great. <laughs> you look great. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. How are you? Gord. Hi, huh? Hi. Just give me a minute. Sure. How to go with the doctor? Okay. The doctor wants the baby to get a fetal echocardiogram. What's that? It's a um, detailed scan of the baby's heart. How come? Well, you know, my sister has those heart problems, and one of my father's brothers died of a heart defect when he was a child, so the doctor says these things could be genetic. Why didn't he suggest this when you were pregnant with Jace? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they didn't have that kind of testing available then. He didn't say anything was wrong. He just wants to do it for precaution. But you're nervous. Yes, I'm nervous. What if something's wrong after all this? The baby is fine. It's just fine. I hope. Look. We've had setbacks and disappointments for the last four years. I'd say we're due for a little good news, hmm? Let's go home. Okay. No, ultrasound. Karen, it's really pretty standard these days. Yeah, until they find out ten years from now it causes some kind of irreversible damage. What's the point of having one exactly? Well, to see how far along Karen is, the uh, size of the baby, and of course to make sure the baby's developing properly. Was there any reason to think it wouldn't? Well, no, but... Uh... Well, then why should I take any tests? You know, I feel great. You know, I'm not, I have no morning sickness. I'm full of energy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating right. I'm taking my vitamins. I'm taking long walks. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I... It's just this, that we want to do this as naturally as possible. I see. And does that involve having natural childbirth? Absolutely. In fact, we've decided to have the baby at home. Karen, I wish you would reconsider that. We've already spoken to a midwife. It's not something that I recommend. Women have been doing it for thousands of years. I know that. But they had no hospital environment to choose from. Well, it's exactly that hospital environment that I'm not crazy about. I mean, I mean you know, I, I don't like tests. I don't like needles. I, and you're always hearing, right, that someone went into the hospital for something small and... They come back with a bigger problem, or they, or they don't come out at all. Now, if something like that were to happen to us with this baby... Karen, there is much more of a likelihood of something happening without proper medical care. So you think it's too dangerous? Fred, well, well, we agreed I, I about know, this. I, I know, but if it's going to jeopardize you or the baby in ways we haven't considered, I think... Am I having a normal pregnancy without complications? Well, yes. Is there any reason to think that that won't continue? No. Okay. Okay, there's nothing to worry about. This is just like a prenatal ultrasound, except it takes a specialized look at the heart as a separate entity from the whole fetus. All we're going to do is take some pictures. Okay, Susan. Everything look all right? Just give me uh, another moment, okay? Okay, that's fine, Susan, thank you. Why don't you get dressed and we'll talk about this in my office? No, please. Tell us now. There appears to be a problem with the baby's heart. I'm not sure what it is. 24 weeks is too early to see that kind of detail. When will you be sure? 28 weeks, we'd have a better idea. 
But whatever it is, it's something that may be correctable after the baby's born. Correctable how? With surgery. But you won't know for another four weeks. Right. Oh, God. No, it's okay. It'll be okay. Lunch. Oh, I love being pregnant, you know that? Hey. I love it too. Isn't that amazing, Fred? We're gonna be parents. Oh, it's hard to imagine, huh? <laughs> we'll be totally responsible for another human being. Are you scared? Uh, I don't yeah, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> a little, yeah. Oh, I'll tell you one thing though. It's going to be the most important thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> what? I'm just glad I told you that. Why do you think it was late or something? <laughs> I don't think he's funny. Oh, what do you mean he's hysterical? <laughs> Sure, the baby's been kicking for weeks. Okay, all right. Well, I'll call the doctor. We've got to go to the hospital. <sighs> Honey, don't panic. I mean, there could be a lot of reasons for this. Like what? Well, I don't know. I'll ask him. I'll call the doctor. But I want to go to the hospital now. Okay. We'll go to the hospital. fetal monitor. It's used to check the baby's heartbeat. There it is. Oh. <laughs> Do you hear that sound? <laughs> is that the most beautiful sound you've ever heard? What'd I tell you? Yeah. I'd like to do an ultrasound as well, just to make sure everything's all right. Why? We heard the heartbeat. Well, the heart's only one organ, Mrs. Shouten. I'd like to have a look at the entire fetus. We don't really like all this technological stuff. I understand, but it's a very safe procedure. It'll only take a couple of minutes. It's better to be safe than sorry. I don't think so. I do. Yeah, come on. I mean, we're here already. We got a big scare. I'm just not gonna. I don't, I'm not gonna have any peace of mind unless I know everything's okay. Huh? I, I, I was driving the truck. I feel responsible. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you hear something you haven't heard before? Yes. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'll tell you about that. We rent a movie. We go home. You relax. You climb into bed. Is there food in there? Yes, there's food in here. I'll fix you. I'll bring it to you in bed. Okay. That's a deal. That's a deal. <laughs> That's an offer I cannot refuse. <laughs> Who's your obstetrician, Mrs. Shouten? Dr. Garland, why? I'm going to call him. I think you should come in for another ultrasound. Why, did you see something wrong? Oh, I'm sure everything's okay. I, I'm just the technician, but why don't we wait till we talk to your doctor?
And as she puffed down the mountain, she seemed to say, I thought I could. I thought I could. I thought I could. The end. Read it again. Forget it, Buster. It's way past your bedtime. Tomorrow morning? I don't think so. Tomorrow, Mama's going to the doctor. There won't be time. Tomorrow night? We'll see. Sweet dreams, honey. Good night. Mom? Hmm? Can the baby hear things in your stomach? Some doctors say they can. Can I say good night to the baby? <laughs> if you want to. Good night, little baby. This is your brother talking. See you in... How many weeks, Mom? Twelve. See you in twelve weeks. I love you. I love you, Jason. Under the covers. Here we go. Stop it. Look, I'm not going to let you torture yourself on top of everything else. Okay? But whatever it is, it's our child. And we'll handle it. I'm scared. For I know. baby has something called anencephaly, which means the brain hasn't developed normally. Uh, how did this happen? No one knows how it happens, Fred. Instead of developing normally, all she has is a rudimentary brain stem. She? It's a girl. Yes. Uh, is there some kind of surgery? Some special treatment? No, I'm, I'm afraid not. she die? Either she will be born dead, or she will die within a few days of her birth. Oh, no, that's not possible. Because we heard her heart beating. Her heart is fine. That's not the problem. She's been kicking and moving for months. And she can't survive. And there's no medicine or surgery that will ever change that. <laughs> <laughs> She's never going to know us. We're never going to feel her touch. We're never going to hear her laugh. And we're gonna watch her take her first step.
to uh, explain to you what we're looking at. Just tell us yes or no. I'm sorry to tell you this, but the left ventricle of the baby's heart is not developing the way it should. What exactly does that mean? A child cannot exist outside of the womb without both the left and the right ventricles. And the left side of the heart is not functioning at all. Tell me again. I want to understand. I want to comprehend what's happening. The baby has a condition called hypoplastic left ventricle. As long as he's inside you, he'll survive. He might even be born healthy, but then once he is born, his heart will slow down and then it will stop. There's only a 5% chance he'll survive the first 48 hours. Can't be true. Because if it is true, how am I supposed to go through my pregnancy? We're going to have to tell Jason. How? How do you tell a five-year-old boy that his brother's going to die before he ever meets him? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and when, when do I start planning the funeral? <laughs> What's the protocol? Do I order the casket now? Or do I wait until after I give birth? Oh, come on, Alice. It's not fair! It's not fair! Oh, it's not fair, no. Karen, we have to talk. Can you please stop that for just a minute? We have some decisions to make. Now Garland said he can take the baby now, or you can wait the full... You can wait the full nine months. I'm carrying the baby to full term. Well, are you sure you want to do that? Hmm? Isn't that, that just going to make it harder? No, it won't. I want to have her with me as long as possible. You understand? Karen, she's not going to make it, no matter what. You think I don't know that? Yeah, okay, all right. Okay, if that's what you want, it's fine. It's... Now we have to decide if you want to have a cesarean section or if you want to deliver naturally. How can you even ask me that? I'm, I'm just asking. Let me have childbirth, okay, Fred? Let me have one thing that's normal. I'm just saying.
I mean, what are you doing here? I was in the neighborhood. Are you sick? I really wish you would have called first. Well, I have called. Every time I do, Gord says you're sleeping. What's the matter, Ellis? Is something wrong? I'm tired. So? Too tired to get even dressed? That's not like you. <sighs> Mother, I'm not in the mood for criticism. I'm not criticizing, Alice. I'm concerned. Okay. All right. There's nothing to be concerned about. I'm fine, really. All right. I'm sorry. I guess I've forgotten how hard pregnancy can be. Let me help you. Morning sickness. Back pains. Swollen feet. It's all worth it in the end, though, isn't it? When you hold that beautiful baby in your arms, it doesn't matter what you've gone through. If you told me you were coming, I'd bake something. It's all right. It's all right. Well, the tea's good and hot anyway. Yeah, okay. Tony, Tony. Mm -hmm. uh, Karen and I have something to tell you. It's about the baby, and it's not, it's not good news. As a matter of fact, it's pretty bad. The baby has something called anencephaly. And what that means is her brain hasn't developed. There's no cure, there's no way to change it. So she can only live for a couple of days at the most. Oh my God. Oh, Fred. Sorry. I don't know what to say. Are you sure there's nothing you can do? Yeah. Yeah, we're sure. What about you, honey? Are you okay? Does this cause medical problems for you? No, Dad, I'm fine. The rest of the baby is perfectly healthy. I mean, she's, she's growing and she's developing like any normal baby. Maybe you should get a second opinion. Connie, we've spoken. Hey, why not? These doctors don't know everything. Maybe somebody's got some new techniques, sir. Dad, there are no techniques for replacing a brain. Sir. I just don't understand why this happened. You know why? Because life is hard. And sometimes it's cruel and it's full of pain and horrible things just happen. And no matter how hard we try and understand it, we never will because they just happen. And there's nothing that we can do about it. Maybe if I'd had the ultrasound earlier. Hey, that wouldn't have made any difference. You know that. No, I don't know yes, that. Yes, you do. You know that. Honey, we can't blame ourselves. It just makes everything worse. Sometimes I wish I could stay pregnant forever. Just to keep her alive. Maybe in a way we can keep her alive. 
Maybe we could donate some of her organs. You know? Give them to another baby who needs them. You know, maybe give some other child a chance to live. Well, I, I mean, you know, when, when you think about it, maybe in a way, then part of her would still live. I'm not ready for this conversation. What if I told you there was a chance to replace your baby's heart with a healthy one? You mean a heart transplant? Is that possible? To be honest, I'm not sure, but I know how upset you've been. So I started doing some research. There are three doctors in the world who've experimented with newborn heart transplants. Now, one of them is Dr. Leonard Bailey, and he's in Loma Linda, California. But what do you mean, experiment? A very new procedure, Gordon. And the jury's still out on how successful it is. Not only that, but all the other infants were diagnosed after they were born and then recommended for surgery. Whereas in your case, the baby's been diagnosed in utero. If he's born healthy enough, and if they can find a donor heart that matches, they'll probably want to do the transplant as soon as the baby's delivered. And that's never been done before. What are his chances of surviving something like that? There's no way to tell. How big is a newborn baby's heart? About the size of a walnut. You're talking about something that big? Couldn't a lot of things go wrong? But if everything went right, we'd save his life. These babies that have had transplants, how many of them are still alive? I don't know. At least we could talk to the doctor, see what's involved. You'd have to fly down to La Melinda. He'd want to examine you himself, of course. Could you set up an appointment for us? Alice, you do understand that this is a very long shot. I understand that today there's hope where yesterday there wasn't any. And I'm going to hang on to that until I know differently. We've been waiting and praying for a miracle. Maybe this is it. I want to talk to this man. I want to see if he can save our baby. Mr. and Mrs. Holmes. Yes. Hi, I'm Sherry Mathis, Senior Coordinator of the Transplant Program. Hi. Welcome to Loma Linda. Thank you. Hi. I didn't realize you had an entire complex here. Oh, yes, it's quite comprehensive. We have obstetricians, neonatologists, social workers, psychologists, specialty nurses, and of course, our heart surgeons. When do we get to speak to Dr. Bailey? Your appointment's for the day after tomorrow. First, I want to show you around the medical center and have you meet with the rest of the transplant team. Why don't we go over to my office and we'll go over your itinerary. Here at Loma Linda, we believe you should talk to everyone you can. This is a major decision and there's a lot of information to absorb before you can come to any decision. So, in other words, some people decide not to go through with this? Yes, and there are some patients that we feel would not be acceptable candidates. It's important for you to understand this is a highly stressful procedure. Not just for the patient, but for the entire family. Not everyone is equipped to deal with it. It's just this way. Come on. Hi, 
I'm Dr. Ellen Kelly from the Neonatology Department. When your baby's born, we'll be the ones keeping him in shape to receive a heart as soon as one becomes available. Where do you get the heart? Well, we take blood samples from both parents for matching purposes and register it with the National Transplant Network. How do you know the right heart will be available when you need it? Unfortunately, we don't. Which means that death can occur while the baby is waiting for a heart. There's also a risk during the operation itself and during the post-operative period. Where are we okay. going? A little patience. Patience. Okay, just a little yeah. walk. Enjoy the view. <laughs> oh, we're in the okay. Mud. Okay. We're here. Okay. It's a horse. You like her? She's, um... She's all yours. You bought me a horse? Yeah. Golden Palomino, just... Like you wanted. Her name's Avalon. I want our baby. <laughs> Babies have gone home from transplantation. Let me just sit here and be more comfortable. Thank you. Of course, home is close by. All of our families are required to live in the area so we can do weekly follow ups. What? Oh, yes. And we will not accept a patient for transplantation unless the family agrees to relocate to Loma Linda for at least a year. A year? Dr. Sakala, we live in Vancouver. My husband's business might never survive if we left for a year. I know it's an enormous commitment, Mrs. Hulk, but unless we are able to monitor the baby's progress after the transplant, I mean, there, there really is no point in putting him through all this. A year. If you really want to donate the baby's organs, I think we should do it. You're right. You know, at least something good will come out of this. Are you sure? Yeah. Come here. I see. Well, can you recommend somebody else that we could talk to? Uh-huh. Okay, well, thanks anyway, Dr. Gong. Bye. What did he say? He said the baby probably won't live for more than a couple of minutes, and there won't be enough time to save the organs. What? Don't you remember he told us she could live for up to a couple days? Well, that's not what he's saying now. Maybe we should call somebody else. Yeah, like who? I don't know. Um, somebody at the hospital. Call the maternity ward. Yeah. Ask okay. for a nurse. Yeah. She might tell us who to contact. Well, 
Yeah, this really doesn't make any sense, you know. I, I don't know how many times I've heard about babies desperately needing organs, and that, you know, here we are willing to contribute. Uh, I see. Okay, thank you. What? I don't know. I, I can't put my finger on it, but these doctors are reacting very strangely. It's, they're almost hostile. Hostile? Why? Yeah, I don't know. But as soon as I mention the baby's got anencephaly, they just turn off. Maybe they know something we don't. Yeah, they must. Hello. Mr. and Mrs. Holt. I'm Leonard Bailey. Sorry to keep you waiting. That's all right. It's nice to meet you, doctor. My wife and I are very anxious to find out everything we can about the heart transplant. You know, you have a rare and wonderful opportunity here. What do you mean? Well, usually a baby is born and then we discover the heart problem. He's put in intensive care and massaged along until we come up with a donor, but sometimes it's too late because the baby's too sick. But in our case, our baby's been diagnosed before birth. Exactly. That gives us a full month to set everything up and line up a donor. Now we can deliver the baby and immediately do the heart transplant. I know what you're thinking. For two days, you've been hearing about the risks, the side effects, the possibilities, the complications. But the truth is that newborns, they often have less problems with surgery and tissue rejection than adults do. How many patients have you had? Seven so far. This is my oldest. He just had his third birthday. He's a charmer, isn't he? <laughs> but uh, you really don't know what the future holds for these children. I don't know what the future holds for any of us, Mr. Hope, do you? But whatever you decide, you have to both agree on it. This decision will affect the rest of your lives. And you'll need each other's support now more than ever. Didn't go well? It's too soon to tell. How's that boy? How's that nose, huh? <laughs> Had to read him an extra story. Makeup. He's asleep now. Oh. You know, we have to talk. You want to go ahead with it? I just keep hearing the facts. Two out of seven died. That means five lived. I've never been tried on a newborn before. But it's a chance. But to what end? I know that we can't predict the future, but uh, even the oldest surviving patient is only three. How many years will our boy have? One? Three? Ten? And how will he live them? Sick? In pain? In and out of hospitals? He'll be on medication every single day of his life. Is that the quality of life that I want to offer my son? Could I look into his eyes and, and know that I had done right for him? You're right to think of the kind of life he's going to lead. I can't close my eyes thinking about it. Every time I think of him at three or ten or tw twenty, the joy of it is clouded by the vision that frightens me. I don't have a crystal ball gourd. I can't see him tomorrow. But I can't see him today. He's alive. Inside of me. I can feel him kicking. I can feel him moving. 
in my body. He's real to me now. This is my little boy. And every time I think of how his life is going to end before it even begins, it fills me with so much grief. But I know that if we don't do this, if we don't take this chance, the only alternative left for our baby is death. I know that. Still, I don't know what to think. I need a clear head, honey. very controversial, that's all. Why? Well, because even though your baby may be legally brain dead, her heart is still beating and will be kept beating until the moment of the transplant. Now, there are some people who consider a body with a beating heart to be still alive. Why can't the baby die a natural death before you take the heart? That's just not how it's done. Look, you two, you, you have enough to grapple with without this. Let's just get through the birth and put this behind us. Start thinking about the next baby, okay? I mean, that's where you should be focusing your energy right now. On the future. Dr. Garland's right, you know. I couldn't let them take our baby's organs if her heart was still beating. This wouldn't be right. I know. Makes me feel sad now. She's gonna have lived and died. Barely a trace. I tell you I love you. Not today. If we go to California, he'll have to make all new friends. I know. And I'd either have to sell the business or 
commute back and forth, which would mean you'd be down there all alone. I know, it's complete upheaval. Completely change our lives. Which leaves me with one last question. Which is, who am I to deprive this child of life? Even if it's only a chance, who am I to tell him he doesn't have that chance? We'll manage somehow. We'll take out a loan if we have to. Oh, God, I love you. I love you so much. It's just a year, right? I mean, what is a year in a whole lifetime? The baby in mommy's tummy has something wrong with his heart. So he has to have an operation. What's an operation? Well, after the baby's born, they're going to take out his bad heart and put in a brand new healthy one. It's called a heart transplant, Jay. Does it hurt? Maybe he'll be asleep. He won't feel anything. But he will be sick for a while afterwards. He'll have to stay in the hospital. And then when he comes home, we'll have to take extra special care of him. Can I still play with him? At the beginning, no. But after he gets better, of course. Do you understand everything we're telling you? Yeah. Any questions you want to ask us? Do I have to have a heart transplant, too? Oh, honey, no. No, of course not. <laughs> you have a healthy heart. It's perfectly fine the way it is. vacation. What? Who's going to deliver the baby? Dr. Kramer, the doctor on call, is coming down now. Oh. If she's alive, Fred, I want to see her, no matter what, okay? Okay. Breathe. Breathe, breathe. You're doing great, sir. Now, let's have another little push. Good, good, go. good, good, good. And one more. That's right. Just a big one. Big one. Good, Karen. Very good. Good. Big push. Big push. Okay, big push. This is the big one. Here she comes. And here she is. Is she alive? Is the baby living? Yes, she's alive. Would you like to see her? Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. All right. Just a minute.
Your name is Gabriel. For the angel that guards the gates of heaven. changing and her pulse is starting to fade we can bring her back to the nursery no no we want to be with her to the end as long as she's not in any pain no she's not in any pain she looks so perfect well in most ways she is i don't know if this will make you uncomfortable but have you thought of donating her organs uh, we contacted several doctors and hospitals. They all discouraged us. They said it was too controversial. That's not their decision to make. It's yours. Now, let me ask you something. There is still a chance to donate her organs. Do you want to? No. Not if our baby won't die a natural death. But we couldn't take the organs unless she did. Excuse me? Your baby will die within minutes. We can't change that. Her heart will stop beating and she'll be gone. We can't revive her, but we can keep the organs functioning by mechanically maintaining her blood flow to them. Believe me, your baby is dying a natural death. I want her life to mean something. I know. We don't have much time. Yes. It's Sherry Mathis. We have a donor. Dr. Bailey wants you here by tomorrow morning. But my baby's not due for another three weeks. That can't be helped, Alice. The heart is available now. Throw some things in a suitcase and get down here. Knock him down. Oh, scared him. That's ball one. Three. That was the hospital. They want us on the plane tonight. Come on, Chase. Let's go. Do you mean to tell me there is not one flight to L.A. from Vancouver until tomorrow? Well, what are people supposed to do? My wife and I have got to get to Los Angeles. What? Oh, this is unbelievable. What? Not only are there no flights to L.A., there's a storm coming that might shut down the airport. What are we going to do? I don't know. What about one of those uh, uh, air ambulance things? They fly everywhere, don't they? I don't know. Well, let's find out. Yeah, would you please page Dr. Franklin for me? This is Gordon Hulk, and it's an emergency. 
That tube, is that keeping her alive? Yeah, that, and the oxygen, and the heat inside the incubator. But she's not alive, in the true sense of the word. I mean, without this respirator, she wouldn't be able to breathe on her own. Where are you taking her? Karen, if you're not comfortable with this decision... No. Just tell me. We're flying her to Loma Linda, California. Hello? Dr. Franklin, does he have any luck? Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's terrific. Yeah, yeah, we'll be there. Okay, thank you, and God bless you. He says it took a lot of arm twisting, but he got government approval for an infant transport team to fly us down there. The plane leaves at midnight. Get the bag. Oh. Are you going to get the baby's new heart, Mom? Yes, sweetheart, and as soon as everything's okay, we're going to send for you so you can see him, okay? Where did they get the heart, Mom? Baby, who doesn't need it anymore, honey? I'll forget everything we can touch her. Oh, sir. Okay, Gabriel. You have to say goodbye now. Hey, I'm brave, girl, sweetheart. The best, bravest girl in the world. I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry. We have to go now. Goodbye, little angel. Boy, you listen to Grandma. Kate. Are you sure you understand about the burglar alarm? Don't worry, we'll be fine. We better get going. It's pouring up there. We got a long ride. Bye bye, kiddo. You'll be good. Bye, Dad. Just remember, Alice, no matter what happens, you did everything you could. Thank you,
Mike Tango, Charlie Medivac, rolling runway 06 left. We finally got the all clear. Fasten your seatbelts, please. Next About time? time? It's been an hour and a half. Exactly how much oxygen do we have? It takes good for eight hours. How long is the flight to Los Angeles? Should take about five and a half hours. Five and a half hours. Frank, can you get a hold of my watch and get a weather update for Southern California? Headwinds are killing us. We've got to refuel. That's impossible. With all these delays, we're running out of oxygen. The baby's not going to make it. I'm sorry, Doctor, but unless we land, neither will we. Put us in touch with the hospital closest to the airport. Denver Tower, this is lifeguard Mike. Denver Tower, this is Mike Tango Charlie. Any word on that oxygen yet? Lifeguard Mike Tango Charlie, tell the doctors to hang in there. Oxygen is on the way. Roger. Right. See there. Unit 22, right, unit 22, traffic down to the mountain in Colorado, wind Ground control, this is Lifeguard Mike Tango Charlie. We are clear. That's it. No more oxygen. I need warm blankets, warm towels, anything to keep the baby's temperature from dropping. It's going to desaturate. That can't be helped. Loma Linda will have to deal with that when we get there. Please hurry. This won't work for long. Thank you. Thank you very much. Keep it up. Blood pressure's dropping. Where the hell is that oxygen? <laughs> well, 
done, my star Charlie Julia Papa. Eight of last in the first high speed Dick Schaefer, please call the operator. Dick Schaefer, please call the operator. She's desaturated. She needs more oxygen. Bring that warmer over here. Alice, Gordon, a complication has come up with your donor during the flight. The heart's not contracting normally, but there's a good chance that with therapy over the next 24 hours, her condition may improve. The baby responded to 40 cc's of saline and the heart returned to normal sinus rhythm. Well, I would like to schedule surgery no later than this afternoon before any further complications occur. Uh, before we proceed, I'd like to reassess the baby's neurological functions. Why? I mean, surely she was evaluated before they'd ever let her leave Canada. She was taken off the resuscitation three separate times. That's right. and every time she was pronounced dead. I know, Leonard, but... There are people on my staff who are not comfortable with the use of anencephalic donors. I'd like to be able to reassure them that this baby meets the strict legal criteria of total brain death. To be honest, I'm not that comfortable with it either. Why not? Well, this baby is a minor who cannot consent to be a donor on her own, who was still alive when first considered to be a donor, and who now is being kept alive for the sole benefit of another baby. Joe, this baby was born with no cerebral cortex and its brain stem no longer functions. She has no spontaneous respiration, no ocular reflex, no gag reflex. She feels nothing. Legally and clinically, she's dead. But ethically? Ethically, we can take her off the resuscitator and let her and the Hulk baby die. Or we can use her heart to keep another child alive. The only choice we have is to lose one life or to lose two. Mrs. Shelton? Yes? My name is Sherry Mathis, and I'm the transplant coordinator of the Loma Linda University Medical Center in Loma Linda, California. Mrs. Shelton, your daughter is scheduled to become a heart donor to an infant down here, and I know we have your written consent, but we'd like to confirm that decision. Are you and your husband absolutely positive you want your daughter to be a donor? It's Loma Linda. They want to know if we're positive we want her to be a heart donor. There's no question in our minds. Great. Thank you. Have you thought about it, Gord? Hmm. Our baby's heart belonging to somebody else's child. A lot. That mother must be a very special woman. Alice, it's time to deliver your son. This is it. team is set up in the operating room next door. We're going to deliver the baby. Dr. Kelly will examine him, and then Dr. Bailey will give him a new heart. Okay? Now, I know that this has been a difficult time for both of you. It's a time, in my experience, when it's helpful to draw on all the support that you can find. Now, if you would like to have a prayer before we begin, we would be happy to do that. And we often do that here at Loma Linda. It isn't necessary, only if you feel comfortable. Yes, we'd like that very much. Dear Lord, 
We've got Alice here who is really concerned about her baby. We do not know what the outcome will be. We ask you to be with her and to give her the peace and the strength to get through this and to be with me and the operating team so that we may operate effectively and efficiently. May your will be done. Amen. 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 Okay, let's do it. Heart rate is steady at 82 beats per minute. Right, I've got a bleeder here I need to tie off. Here you go. Hold the clamp, please. It's fine. Your heart rate's holding steady. You're doing great. All right. If you're okay, just relax. Pressure normal. Good. Here we go. Respiration 16. We've got a baby. That's it. Let's see him in just a minute. Thank you, Stephen. Karen? He looks great. <laughs> Oh, he looks terrific. So it delivers a baby. Doctor? Yes, Take him. Take him. What happened? Helen, he stopped breathing. Okay. Get our quick bag and mask. I need a 3-5 inch tracheal tube. Right. Start an IV, I want to cross the land and drift. Right away. Sally, hook up the EKG monitor. Okay, you're ready for this. Start an IV line here. It's going The baby went into heart failure, but we stabilized him in time. Dr. Bailey is performing the transplant now. Thank you. Are we getting proper flow? Yes. Scalpel. Suction, please. Monitor on. Here you go. Thank you. So how long does everything take? <clears throat> well, best scenario, two and a half hours. Can you tell us anything about the donors? Mm, we can't give out that information. Please. It's very important to me. Was it a girl or a boy? It was a girl. Did she have a name? Alice. Please, just a first name. Gabriel. Gabriel. <gasps> if our son survives this, I'd like to have their name and their address, please. Well, Alice, that's impossible. But couldn't you at least check with them? These people are giving our son life. We can't pretend they don't exist. Pressure is fine. We're at two hours, 35 minutes. Okay, now I'm going to remove the aortic clamp. Come on. Come on now. Come on now. Hello. Hi, Connie. Okay, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, we'll call you right back. Here, get up, get up. Channel 3, channel 3, the news. Medical Center in California, the youngest patient in medical history, received a heart transplant in a two and a half hour surgery. <laughs> she did it.
baby Paul, delivered by cesarean section in order to undergo the procedure, was only three hours old when Dr. Leonard Bailey, using an anencephalic donor, <laughs> successfully replaced his defective heart. What a remarkable <laughs> story. <laughs> Over to you now, Dave, with the Katie, and it was a big day today. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Shelton. Yeah? Here you go. Thank you. Flowers from who? I don't know. <sighs> there is nothing more pure and beautiful than the heart of a child. Thank you for your great gift to our son. May God bless you. Alison Gordon Holt. say to a woman who first loses her baby and then her husband from a heart attack. When I heard about Fred, I was so sorry. I started so many letters to you, but I knew that nothing I could say could possibly mean anything. And maybe I even felt guilty about my own good fortune while you were experiencing so much pain. Even so, the past five years have not been easy for us. After we returned from California, Paul's health and medical care continued to dominate our lives. This year, for the first time, he's finally in good shape, and that's why we want you to be our guest in Vancouver, to help us celebrate the fifth birthday of someone who is as much a part of you as he is of us. I would love to meet you, Karen, but more important, I would love Paul to meet you. He knows that it took two of us to give him life. And that because of you, he will celebrate this birthday and many birthdays to come. Please visit us and share our happiness. Sincerely, Alice Hulk. I'm so glad you could come. Me too. Please come in. Barton! How you doing? All right, all right. Karen, this is my husband, Gordon. Hi. Hi. It's nice to meet you. My older son, Jason. Hello. Paul! Paul! There's somebody here I'd like you to meet. This is the very special lady I told you about. Karen, this is Paul Gabriel Bailey Hulk. Hi, Paul. 